I've seen the comments and today it's going to be Emery's excellent 442. This tactic conceded an all-time low of 0.35 and genuinely is one of the best defensive tactics I have ever made on this channel. Let's get right into the video. So we are going to start off with Villa. We're going to get right into it. I want to quickly say if you do enjoy the tactics on this channel, please do smash the like button. It helps out massively and helps the video get found. But let's get over and see these results. So we're going to start off with obviously his main team. The team is at now and what a job he's doing. And we've done also a very good job as we get Champions League football, finishing side of the top four, obviously, and one point behind second place Manchester City. So a very close push, and we potentially could have even got the second place finish. Ollie Watkins comes in with 30 goals, ranking him the highest goal scorer. Moussa Diaby, a fantastic player with 20 assists, and also Leon Bailey coming in with the highest rating at 7.53. Now, Aston Villa fans, if I have any watching, let me know who is the best player in your team in your opinion let me know in the comments in terms of the team stats 86 goals ranking as the best which does surprise me because i think manchester city manchester united maybe liverpool should be outscoring us but obviously had a bit of a rough season and in terms of conceded only 33 goals which is absolutely incredible in terms of the other trophies we also win the carabao cup against liverpool showing that we can also perform really well directly against another top team and also the conference league against florentina so a very good season in my opinion feel free to disagree in the comments but if i'm an aston villa fan i am running away with this season but over to the data hub then and again this is not going to be the 0.35 conceded one but still we're under a goal a game goals per game still over two 2.26 to be exact 13.26 shots per game which is quite high to be honest and also a pass completion at 89.87 i'm going to save the powerhouse till last because that's what you can really expect from this tactic at its best but i never like testing with this team because they usually always do me over but Villarreal we tested with them it has to be realistic he did manage them therefore that's what we tested and do you know what a very impressive season locking in a second place finish in the Spanish league a few points behind Real Madrid but three points above Barcelona Valencia Atletico Madrid Sevilla some really good teams in there and we have pretty much secured that second league spot with relative ease to be honest with you and also got to the semi-finals of the Europa League but unfortunately Liverpool obviously in there and they're a little bit too much to deal with at the moment with this current team. Now if I was playing a save of Villarreal I had some signings two seasons in I think I could have done Liverpool over but with this team, probably not. In terms of the goal scorers, it's going to be Diaz with 23 and Moreno coming in with 16 assists. And it is going to be Soloff coming in with a 7.57 match rating. So very, very good to see. In terms of the team stats, it's going to be 79 goals scored, ranking us the second best, which to be fair, we haven't got a Bellingham Vinicius we haven't got a Rodrigo all of these sort of players so I'm not going to argue with Real Madrid on that one and goals conceded we are going to be the best coming in at 27 so very very good going over to that general performance the data hub we're going to edge over that two goals per game just at 2.08 conceded still way under a goal a game at 0.71 12.45 shots per game and a pass completion at just over 90 exactly 90.07 so a very good display in this league again this tactic is not designed to score you four or five goals a game it's designed to get results that's literally the only thing that we're going for and we're doing it so far of course he did have a stint with psg and as you can imagine psg have got a very good team anyway but this is really the indicator of what you could expect if you have got a team similar to psg or possibly even a little bit worse roughly what you can expect for the better teams in the game so we actually go invincible in the league which is a massive upgrade winning 31 games and drawing three other games and you can see how close them games actually were as well in terms of the goal scorers it is going to be the like why is not going off the screen there we go it's going to be killing mbappe coming in with 43 goals also picking up the highest rating and also the most assists he essentially carried this psg team down to the ground and it's a shame he's not doing that in real life at the moment but you know what he done it for us i'm not going to complain 113 league goals scored and only 12 conceders and on this occasion zero red cards and in terms of the competitions champions league against ac milan the french cup against lille and the trophy de champion against toulouse so a quadruple winning season dominance the team stats for this psg team we are going to feature in how many is that six i believe so most points most goals fewer shots against at 155 the most shots for at 742 
Possession wise, we're not really aiming for possession, but still a decent level at 56% and the fewest conceders matched, obviously, with the most clean sheets. This is where we see how defensive this tactic actually can be, as we're going to see easily over three goals a game, 3.32, and are conceded at 0.35, so nearly, nearly, not officially, but scoring three goals compared to what we are conceding every single game, over 21 shots per game, and a pass completion of 89.72. So this is the max you can get out of the tactic, and it's absolutely crazy. As far as games go in a final, it's going to be an 8-2 win over Lille in the French Cup final. Now, this is a very embarrassing scoreline for Lille, so I do apologise for any Lille fans watching, but we got off to a flying start inside of 4 minutes and 20 seconds. And from this point onwards, it was a set-piece masterclass that makes it 2-0. Great ball in from Mbappe, even better header from Kimbembe. And we just keep building up. Great pass and play through the middle. Mbappe takes a bit of a weird touch, but eventually it does pay off. 3-0 inside of 33 minutes. And you know what? To be fair to Lille, they do bounce back here and get one back and maybe a small part of me thought do you know what they might cause an issue but they really didn't as we score again from a set piece and Bappe goes back stick this time a little bit lucky with the rebound a poor clearance but we've got to take it a penalty from Mbappe. Essentially, Mbappe ran the show. He really, really did. Another Lille goal here, though, I believe, does come in. A great cutback. A really good goal, actually. Got to give credit where credit is due. But unfortunately for them, they never really were a massive threat, as it was quite a nice set piece there. A little knockdown and a volley. A couple more goals to come in. Moani into Mbappe, who's just terrorising this back line. And I mean... You're not going to get a better goal than that. You're really not, to be honest with you. And one more goal here. Vitinha into Colo Mani, a great player in the game. Through to Mbappe. Very similar position and a great finish again. Now, I know we didn't win the Spanish League, but I'm just going to prove that we can beat the best teams in a 2-0 win against Real Madrid. Now, I know we were at home, but this still speaks levels for how well this sets up against the real top teams. And you can see here, the pass and play was actually really impressive. Now, I don't know what Kepa's doing for that goal, but the pass and play to get in that situation was really, really well put together. And the second goal is just before half time, a great ball in and make sure you got your set pieces in because it makes a difference. So it's now going to be time to break down the tactic. But if you are enjoying today's video, it is now the perfect time to leave a like and definitely subscribe because we're so close to 15k and we've got a year's worth of content. It's going to be a magical year. And trust me, you want to be a part of the journey. But let's go ahead and break down this fantastic 4-4-2. So kicking things off, it is going to be the sweeper keeper coming in simply on the default instructions, a fullback on the right hand side simply on the default. Now I want to say this very quickly into the video. In terms of this tactic, you are going to see a lot of players on default instructions, and that's not because I forgot to do anything. It's because with a 4-4-2, it's a very basic formation, and I feel like you can complicate it way too much by having instructions on purely for the sake of it. So now I could easily have this fallback on get further forwards, but for a general default instruction, a default tactic, I want the players to be fairly basic. So there is a logic behind not having many instructions. I've done loads of testing, and sometimes the more basic systems get the results. So that's exactly why you're going to see what you're going to see. We're going to have two ball playing defenders, which again are going to be completely on the default and the fullback remains again, simply on the default. So we're not going to have anything special at all for this back four because we're not strictly relying on them to get further forwards and do too much in the game. Naturally, the fullbacks will push forward but we're not going to have them specifically told to do that. The midfield, probably the most important part of the team. The DM comes in on support, simply on Mark Titer, and a deep line playmaker comes in on support, simply on the default. So nice and simple so far to keep up with. On the right-hand side, now there's several roles you could use here. You could obviously go with the wide playmaker. I personally preferred the wide midfielder, so that is why I've got him simply on the supportive role. And on the left-hand side, we've got the inverted winger on support, again, simply on the default role. Now, please don't be put off by this. I will say it again because some of you guys might be thinking, what am I watching? But honestly, it does work, I promise you guys. And to finish it up top, obviously, the complete package, the two up top, the pressing forward on support, and also the advanced forward coming in simply on shoot more often. And that is going to give you your team, your player instructions. I do want to quickly say as well, thank you to all of the wonderful names coming down the screen. These are going to be new or existing Patreon members. There are now over 560 of you guys. So you definitely want to get involved and see what all the hype's about because there's over eight perks for you guys to become on a Patreon. You get access to all three of these tactics. You also are going to get early video and tactic release. You get priority in your tactic and rebuild requests. You get one-on-one -on -one tactical help. You get Twitch perks as well. And also enroll to the monthly giveaway. So 
definitely go over and check it out. The link's going to be in the comments and in the description. But let's go over now and talk about them crucial team instructions. Now, this whole tactic is based around a clean slate on a positive mentality. Now, going over to the team instructions, we're actually going to go with a fairly narrow approach to the game just because it sort of compresses that team and makes them a lot more harder to break through. And in some elements, this sort of this image just describes it really well. Some areas of the game, you're essentially going to have a back eight the opposition has to break. Incredibly hard to get through and very frustrating. We're going to play out from the back and focus to play through the middle because the reason why we're going through the middle is because, well, for one, we have two midfield players deep here, but also both of these players on the right and the left do sort of come inside. So it makes sense to play through the middle and really utilize all the players we have in that area. The directness is going to be set to shorter alongside of a slightly higher tempo. And on this occasion, I am going to go for mixed crosses, but I've had a couple of comments lately asking about this. If you've got a small striker, have low crosses. If you've only got a big striker and you think you really want to abuse that, go with obviously the floated, but in my opinion, mix is the real go-to. Transition, we're simply going to have the counter press, the counter, distribute to the centre backs while taking short goal kicks. So again, a little bit of an aggressive element to this tactic, getting stuck in, getting some challenges in, as we probably saw in the highlights as well. And that is just a really good way of playing. And it sort of catches a lot of teams off guard because they see a 4-4-2, which looks quite negative, to be honest with you. And when we start pressing, they don't know what to do. Goal possession and finally a time to use the mid block comes in with Emery alongside of that standard defensive line more often and also get stuck in. Now, only one of the saves we got an outrageous amount of red cards. I think it was five, um, which was with Villarreal, if I'm not wrong. Now, if you are picking up way too many bookends, you can take this off, but it genuinely is team dependent. With PSG, we got zero. It comes down to several factors, player discipline, obviously their stats when it comes to tackling, are they going to complete successful challenges, etc, etc. It really comes down to so many factors, so it's purely down to your team and who you have making the challenges. Thought we'd watch one more game, a 9-0 win over Rennes, obviously in the French League, just to see a real indicator. And by the way, this is a great picture because when we are counter-attack and with this Emery side, look at the amount of players that actually get forward. So although it displays itself as a bit of a defensive only sort of system, you definitely are going to get a lot of players on the counter-attack and you are going to score loads of goals, not just with PSG as well. Obviously, with a team like PSG, you are going to score more goals. But quite funny here as well, as we actually get seven goals come in from the 48th minute. So it's a complete collapse from this French League team as Yagate there, an absolute steamer of a shot from the edge, as it is going to be the star man on the right-hand side into Hakimi, takes a touch inside, and again... This man knows how to hit a ball and there's no reason for him not to be striking a ball in his team. We don't restrict them to having to work the ball into the box. So you are going to see a mixture of long range efforts, loads of set pieces. Obviously, that's down to you guys. And also just driving at the back line and really getting in their face. Although you are seeing good passing play, we're not designed to be a ticky tacker team. So you are going to see moments like this where your player is simply going to counter by himself if he can and have a crack at goal. And essentially, that is what I want from this Emery team. I just want directness. I want urgency. Try and get a goal and then we can defend on it. And on this occasion, we score nine. Of course, as I always provide in my videos, we're now going to go over an attacking and a defensive variant. Now, if you are a Patreon and you're watching and you don't know, you can obviously go over and download all of these very quickly. But we do also include them in the videos because that way I'm not forcing anyone to do something they don't want to do. So we are going to go over both variants and I would highly recommend you have all three of these in your saves because you can essentially change the way it plays in a matter of a button. So it's very very quick and very easy to do. So a sweeper keeper is going to remain on the same. The fullbacks now on either side are going to have some instructions. Cross aim center and get further forwards because now we are trying to actually take the game to that team. So they're both going to be on exactly the same just to clarify that. The DM is going to remain the same alongside of the deep line playmaker and that's because we made changes to the wide areas. So these two in midfield, I don't want to completely have them attacking as well. So they remain the same. On the left, however, the invert winger now goes on to attack on shoot more often now only have this on if you've got a play that has got around about 12 above finishing on that left hand side and on the right hand side we've got a wide midfield player on attack now which naturally means he's going to get further forwards and these two remain unchanged so the real big change the wide players being the fullbacks and obviously the wingers as well so that is going to make all the difference in terms of actually creating danger with the wide with the sort of wide areas of the field but also you are going to see the benefits of obviously creating more chances to the front too as well so this transforms the tactic alone but also we have team instructions so again clean slate 
positive mentality, but the real change here is going to be an optional one. And I want to say optional because it is an Emery tactic, and I know you're looking at this like, where's the change? It's completely down to you, but if you want to, I would recommend having Be More Expressive on. And the reason why I would say that is because if you're a team where you feel like you're comfortable enough, you've got enough quality in the team, where if you get caught on a counter-attack, you've got a decent defense to bail you out, then I would recommend it. But because it is an Emery tactic, and obviously you guys are expecting a defensive masterclass, I don't want to sabotage you and leave you vulnerable on the counter-attacks. So it's an optional instruction, hence why it's not going to be selected in this video. In transition, of course, there is going to be one real key change. That is going to be getting the ball moving quickly. So we're going to simply tick distribute quickly. Possession, a real key change is unfortunately removing that mid-block and a little bit more urgency. We're going to go with the high pressure line of engagement alongside of that standard defensive line. We're going to max out the trigger press and also obviously have get stuck in and that is going to completely transform a very balanced 442 into a definitely more attacker minded 442 now of course a defensive tactic now this i would definitely say i would not recommend going into a game with this again this is your purely especially because the 442 already is balanced this is purely designed for a defensive way of playing football. So if you are a goal up, you're really desperate to hold on because essentially you have a back eight in, in all realism. That's what you're going to have. So the goalkeeper is going to be on support. The fullbacks both go back to being exactly on the default alongside of two default ball playing defenders. We're naturally going to see a bit of a, a bit more of a negative midfield. A DM comes in on defend on the, on Mark Titer, not Mark. I was going to say Mark Harder, Mark Titer. And also the deep blind playmaker is going to come in again, but these two players is now going to be on defense so very restricted and very defensive and to complete this back eight we've got to have a defensive winger on the left hand side on support and also on the right hand side now the great thing about these is they are classed as a defensive winger but they actually are quite aggressive so they are going to close down more they are going to tackle harder so they're not going to be you know they're not going to be back here for example they are going to be quite aggressive players who just naturally win the ball back so it's not as negative as what you may think and obviously these front two are going to remain unchanged because we can't have everyone back here we can't have a back 10 so that is exactly the defensive variant for emery's 442 instructions a lot's going to change so clean slate balanced balanced mentality this always remains the same on this occasion we're going to pass the ball into the space we're going to focus play through the middle and we're actually going to play out from the back now we are going to completely transform how we play the tempo is going to go to lower because now we're going to sort of just sit back and not sit back and not go into challenges but we're not going to take the game to them too much we're going to go with a standard directness so a bit more direct and we're actually going to opt for hit early crosses because if you're playing like this any chance you can get is going to be highly, highly appreciated. In transition, we're going to untick counter press. We're still going to be a counter attacking team. However, when we have got the ball with the goalkeeper, we're going to slow the pace down and we're going to distribute to the centre backs while taking short goal kicks. And out of possession, it's going to be very, very basic, pretty much the same as the first one, if not the same. The standard line, the mid block line of engagement, more often and get stuck in. Now, if you really want to be negative, you could even have a lower line if you really wanted to. But in my opinion, there is such thing as inviting too much pressure onto your team. So this is just about the match you can do before it gets to that level. And that is going to give you guys three fantastic stick emery tactics and i was thrilled to actually get requests for this because i love watching the guy play i'm a big fan of watching defensive football and it's very fun to watch him play football and let me know in the comments where do you think villa are going to finish this season i'm going to go with fifth i genuinely think they will and if you guys have enjoyed today's video please do leave a like drop a little comment below definitely subscribe we've got a whole year worth of content and i'll see you boys in the next video and if you guys did enjoy today's video here are going to be a couple more videos i'm sure you're going to love down here, you're going to see my previous video, and here is going to be a video I personally recommend for you guys to check out. Trust me, you're going to love it.